Hello, girls and guys. Why don't we take a look at daily oral language sentence number 89. As you know, I'm going to ask you to copy it down the wrong way you see it. And then after we go over it, you're going to copy it down the correct way. So you'll have it down twice, the wrong and the right. And that practice is really going to help us out. So let's take a look at this sentence. It says, has you read Troy's short story, The Open Window, for today's English class? Sam asked. I'm going to say it again. Has you read Troy's short story, The Open Window, for today's English class? Sam asked. Now, this is an interesting sentence. And what makes it interesting is the fact that we said Sam asked rather than Sam said. Now, it is important to note, since Sam asked this, we know that everything else needs to be put into quotation marks. And Sam asked needs to be separated out by something. Normally, I would separate out Sam asked with a comma. And then after Sam asked, I would put a period and then I would go back and put my quotation marks, right? To show that he has said everything else. So let's do that for a second. Then I'm going to show you something, how it's going to be different. So he said everything except Sam asked, right? Has you read Troy's short story, the open one for today's English class? So I would close it out. But here's a problem. Does anybody know what it is? Because Sam asked this question, I don't put a comma inside his quotation. Oh, no. I put a, let me get rid of the comma. I put a, let me know. Yes, I put a question mark inside there. And that shows me that he asked this. It is an interrogatory question. So I have a question mark in there. And then I put the period after there. So the question mark shows the end of his question. And the period shows the end of this sentence, which Sam asked is part of. Let's continue. Now, from the beginning, a lot of people now would tell me to capitalize the H and has. And as at that point, I would say, no, I will not because I can't have the word has. I can't say has you. It's have you. You have. You can't say you has. You have. So it's backward that up. If you can't say has you, it's have you. So have you read Troy's short story? Clearly, we're going to capitalize Troy. Also, it's his short story. How do I show possession for Troy? Again, his name doesn't end in S, it ends in Y. So we would put the apostrophe between the Y and the S. Take a look at short story. Do I, the short story, the name of the short story, the open window, what do I do to the title of the short story? Of course, I capitalize the title of the short story, right? But I don't capitalize the words short story. That's not a, a proper noun, but the name of the short story is. So I have open quotes. Have you read Troy's short story, The Open Window, for today's English class, Sam asked. Now, what else do we do to the title besides capitalize The Open Window? Remember, it's a short story. And what do I do to short stories? Remember, I put them in quotation marks. But Mr. Kenny, Mr. Kenny, you can't double quote The Open Window in this sentence. Why can't I put double quotes on this sentence? Why? Because this is a quoted sentence, and I have it quoted from beginning to the end of what he said. If I have a double quoted short story in it, you won't know where he stopped talking, right? So how do I show the short story as quoted without double quoting it? You've got it, ladies and gentlemen. You single quote the short story inside a double quoted sentence. So I have, have you read Troy's short story, The Open Window, for today's English class? Clearly, today's does need an apostrophe because which English class is it? It's today's English class. Today is owning that English class. It's possessing that English class. But there's a problem with my apostrophe. Today's doesn't end in S. It ends in Y. So the apostrophe goes before the S, not after it. Excellent. So for today's English class, we have our question mark inside that. And we have two more things we need to capitalize in this sentence. Does anybody see what they are? Good. You always capitalize the word English because it is A. Language, good, excellent. And then also, of course, we're going to capitalize Sam. I think we did everything. This is a pretty cool sentence. Let's see if we did it right. Okay, so I have open quotes, have you, you can't say has you, read Troy's, we capitalized Troy, we put an apostrophe because it's his short story. We decapitalized the, the, the term short story because it's not a proper noun, but we did capitalize the name of the short story, the open and window. Notice, please, oh, please, please, please notice it. We only have singular quotes around the open window. Why? Because this sentence is a double quoted sentence. You can't have double quotes inside double quotes. So allow me to get rid of my circles and you'll see it. Take a look at that. The open window is singular quoted inside our double quoted sentence. We fixed the apostrophe in today's because it's before the S, not after, because it doesn't end in today's. 
I mean, it doesn't end in S, it ends in Y, so we put apostrophe S. We capitalize English, of course, because it's the title of a language. Our question mark, not a comma, goes inside the quotes because he asked this. He didn't say it, he asked it. And then, of course, we capitalize Sam and put a period at the end of our sentence. Really well done, everybody. Thank you.